Hi guys, it's the Walking Zero Zero Dead here, and I'm doing my very first game review, and it's going to be of uh, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm's Generations on the Xbox 360. You can get this for about 22 quid on Amazon at the moment, which is a pretty cool price. Storm's Generation is developed by CyberConnect2. It features a large, you know, cast of uh, characters you can select with 52 playable characters. Um, a few of the characters do have like alternate costumes with uh, ultimate, like, you know, like different like ultimate jitsu attacks. So. So it probably roughly brings it down to maybe like 65 plus characters if you take away all the alternate versions of like Naruto or Sasuke. The game also features a trading card like booster pack which unlocks like exclusive like game content in like games mode which is like these. You get like they're called like the sage mode booster packs. They're pretty cool. I feel that's like a really nice touch to sort of add that to the actual Xbox game itself that it ties in with the trading card game so that was really cool. Personally, I've never played Storm 1 or Storm 2, but I've played Rise of the Ninja and uh, Broken Bonds, and I absolutely loved those. So Generations was my first Naruto fighting game, so unlike everyone else, I wasn't like mega like hyped up for it or disappointed by the game. So this is going to be kind of like an unbiased view, because I've never played the previous Storm games. The graphics are like cell shaded, and they look you know bright and colourful and sharp, you know, they're pretty much spot on. It feels like you're playing an episode of Naruto itself, you know, it's that good. The animation's tremendous, or should I say the graphics. All the characters look, you know, how they should look. All of the special attacks from all the special characters, like the Rasengan and the Jidori, they all look like they should do to their anime counterparts, and all the sound effects are, like, perfect. And uh, the English dub cast also comes back to dub the computer games. So that was, like, really cool that, you know, all the characters look spot on, and, you know all the dub cast is back so it, it definitely feels like you're playing a Naruto episode. Generations like story mode is the biggest letdown to the game. It feels like an arcade sort of like mode like from a street fighter or like a virtual fighter because it lacks any like real depth and the storylines they're too short. They take anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes to finish each and there's like Kakashi story, Naruto story, Sasuke's, um, The Masked Man's, Killer Bees and they're, they're all too like short. You also tend to like repeat the same sort of like fights over and over again. Like Sasuke versus Itachi must happen like two to three times. So playing the same fights over and over again can get a little bit boring. Whereas in Storm 2, from what I've heard, you can walk around the entire like hidden leaf village and you get like side quests and also you get like boss battles. Boss battles in generations would have been absolutely amazing. But you know, taking away all these things you know, it really like hurt the story mode in my opinion. The only good thing about the story mode is at the start of each new character you choose to play through with, you get like a brand new like animation of their like tail, which is like narrated by the third Hokage's like voice actor. So I thought that's like a really cool touch. Personally my favourite story is the Killer Bee rap. This is by far the best part of the entire story mode. Killer Bee's rap is so catchy and it's so funny and it's just absolutely awesome. I feel the developers focus more on like the online mode rather than the single player storyline mode which they tend to do a lot nowadays. Um, the online mode you can get like endless battles which is like winner stays on or you can get like a tournament which is pretty cool but um, the only problem with online is people like spam the hell out of like super jitsus which is like really annoying. The gameplay itself, like the combat system is quite simple and easy to you know play just like pick up and like master it really within like a couple of days. It, it's really much, it's really a lot like Dragon Ball Z Budokai games, you know, uh, the whole combo system and the whole, um, like, like super moves and com linking them together, it's really a lot like that. You can definitely see it was inspired by the Budokai games, so I really love that, because Budokai games are actually my favourite fighting games ever. I put them over Street Fighter and everything, just because they're really, really fun to play. In Generations, they've added, like, a new substitution bar, like a substitution jitsu bar, which adds more like strategies to fights because when when you've like depleted all of your jits uh, like substitutions, this leaves you like wide open to like combo attacks. And online, obviously, it leaves you wide open to people spamming like ultimate jitsus at you. Though you can only use like four in a row uh, before it has to like recharge. Though in fights, you know, if you're recharging your jitsu bar, that's pretty much when you're going to get taken down by someone because you know you're left wide open and you're pretty much at your weakest point. 
Also, Jitsus have been tweaked for longer range, like fighting styles, such as like Daedra. So now you can either be like a close range fighter, a mid range fighter, or you can be, you can like sit back at the very end of the screen and you can like throw attacks at people from a long distance, which is like really cool if you're doing that to someone. But if you're on the opposite end of it and someone's using a long range fighter, that could be super annoying. Um, I feel that like this fighting in this game, it's really enjoyable to play. And, you know, also I said, it really reminds me of the old, like, Dragon Ball Z Budokai games. They're, they're, it's really enjoyable. And uh, it's got, you know, it's got some l longevity to it. There are, like, four feature modes to give more longevity to this game, such as survival mode, tournament mode, training mode, and the shop. Survival mode involves beating characters, like, back-to-back. -back. After each round, you gain a small percentage of your health back. And, uh, you know, there are also, like, bonus conditions to win in a fight, which gets you a larger percentage of your health back. And uh, survival mode was probably one of my favourite things about this game. Uh, then you've got tournament mode, which has two different styles. There's offline challenge tournament, which involves fighting a set group of fighters, and there's four, like, tiers of difficulty level. There's a Genin, Chonin, Jonin, and Hokage level. This was personally my most favourite part of the whole game, was playing, like, the tournament mode, like, online and offline. The other types is a battle tournament which is like four to eight players so you're fighting in a group or a team of fighters which is it's quite cool but I preferred it when it was like one on one, one on one sorry like knockout tournament that was my most favorite part of the whole game you then got training mode which is pretty much there to like practice using different characters so you can find your perfect character to fight with or your perfect team and you know you can learn like the move sets of all the different combos and all the ultimate different jitsus and try and like link them all together which is like it's obviously quite useful and then you've got the shop in the shop you can buy ninja info cards which are I will show you a ninja info card they're like these which was what I was showing you and they've all got like little numbers on them but um, you buy these and they boot, they like boost the attributes of some of your characters and these cards can also be earned in like tournament mode but I don't know if my camera will actually zoom in on it because it's such tiny little writing there you go, that there you type that in online as well where I was saying, where, uh, sorry, on the game itself and the, obviously I said the game ties in with the trading card game so you put that little code in and it unlocks you that card and I thought that was like a really cool little touch to the game actually um, other features you can do is ninja tools. These customise your characters like ninja tool palettes, so it's all the different like shuriken you throw or like paper bombs and all that sort of stuff. And uh, you know, so that's a really cool way of like customising your character when you fight. And also you get like titles for your ninja cards, so random ones like you can get the yellow beast of the leaf village or something so you remember what sort of like a move set is and stuff like that. So I'm pretty much gonna wrap this up and give you my you know my final thoughts and opinions on generation. In my opinion, it's a, it is a really fun game to play, and it obviously like mirrors the old Budokai games. And you know, you've got a ton of playable characters. You know, all your favourite Naruto characters are pretty much going to be there. You've, you know, essentially you've got 72 characters to play with, so that's absolutely awesome. You can play as the Rai Kage, the Yellow Flash, uh, Daedara, Toby, Tintin, Rock Lee. You know, there's I could go on and on and on. The only problem is is that it lacks something special with its storyline mode. It feels too arcadey. Whereas in the previous games you could run around the village and you could do so much more. You know, that was like a real letdown. Even though I've never played it, but I could, you know, just from talking to other people and just playing generations, it it lacked something special. The storyline mode just lacked something. You know, there's no side quests, there's no boss fights. You know, they really could have done something more. Um, online's fun as long as you don't get a spammer. And uh, I really enjoyed like the survival mode and the tournament mode. That you know really gave me some longevity for the game. It's worth playing, I think, if you can find it for cheap, say around 15 to 20 quid or 15 to 20 dollars, wherever you're from. It's definitely worth picking it up if you can find it for a reasonable price. And uh, I'd probably give it. Well, actually, I'll say I really like the graphics as well because of the whole cell shading and then, you know the whole dub cast as well. That was really good. I'd give it like a six out of ten, maybe a seven out of ten, but probably a six because. Uh, I'd probably put things like Metal Gear Solid 1 and Resident Evil up at 9s and 10s, so a 6 is just, but it, a 6 for me is actually quite a good score, it's, it's above average, it's enjoyable, it's worth playing sort of thing. So guys, drop me some comments down below, so what are your thoughts on uh, Storm Generations, and are, are you looking forward to Storm 3, because it looks pretty damn cool from what I've been hearing, and uh, who was your f who's your favourite character to use in this game, or your favourite characters, you know, drop me some comments down below. Personally for me, 
I like using Naruto, and I like using uh, Minato as well, like the fourth Hokage. I think he's really good. And I, I also like to use Toby. I just like to use really fast fighters that are quite, you know, hard to, to fight against. They've got really good attacks. And um, if you could change anything about Storm Generations, what would it be? Obviously, I think for a lot of people it's going to be the storyline mode. But drop me some comments. What would you change about the game? And um, if you like my stuff, please subscribe. And go check out some of my anime reviews if you're into anime, my anime unboxings, my anime character profiles, all the other good stuff I do. And uh, give us a thumbs up if you like my video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.